Nee. Just, just whatever, bro. Just okay. Do you want sugarless tea? Yeah. yeah. Um, so my name is Jordan. This is my shack. We live in Durban. Um. My name is Luke. Um, well, we want to make a documentary and uh, we kind of been packing and everything's ready to go. Just uh, we've having troubles finding a cameraman because everyone we go to seems to think we're a little bit crazy. Basically, for the past 20 years, we've been talking about going to find this dinosaur. It's called Mokele and Bembe, and it lives in the Congo rainforest. And yeah, we just figured 20 years of, of talk is just too much, so time has finally come to go and find it. At the moment, we, we don't really have any money. Which is a problem. Mm. So um, from what we hear, it's quite expensive because you can't fly in there, obviously, because that costs a lot of money. So we um, don't have a car either. So we just figure we're gonna hit Chuck. Okay, take one. Hi, my name's Jordan. My name's Luke. Donovan, I'm a filmmaker, environmental science student. I first heard about Michele and Bembe when I was about 10 years old. Got a very large body, um, neck like a diplodocus with a long tail. Most of the expeditions that have gone there haven't come back with anything solid. So yeah, it would just be the ultimate claim to find the thing. We heard of this old Don, he was sort of just gung-ho enough to do it. It sounded wild, and these two dudes sounded crazy enough to pull it off. So I said, why not? Congo is a country that you can't predict. At times like this, that helps us off one doing these kind of trips. And... <laughs> this looks like an accident. Are those they rebels from uh, Rwanda or they from Congo? From Uganda. They kill and they run. We're desperately trying to communicate back home. We're just sleeping here in the hospital with a car we were traveling with uh, rolled. Really is the most hectic place I've ever been to. Uh, Jordan, your, un your underpants are ready, I think, eh? Like that. Okay, yes, I'm feeling good. Eh? I'm actually really just excited to get going now. I feel like we, you know, we've been waiting so long for this. So, like, we were really well prepared, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know if you know, like mine and Jordan's moms are actually twins, so we kind of grew up together. And um, yeah, so we grew up kind of, uh, Jordan grew up on this plot of land, so like he's quite an out... What about my fishing, eh? Yeah, yeah, I can. Like, uh, basically Jordan really rates himself as a fisherman. I've never actually seen him catch a fish, but... We got yeah. catties, eh? Yeah, whatever, bro, pack your catties. Um, take three, one, uh, one for Donna. So. <laughs> no, you can just take one for yourself. We did do a little bit of practice when we, um, we went with the mate of ours, Rob. We hitchhiked from Durban all the way to Cairo. We only had like 5,000 Rand, so like $350. This is like a bit obvious, I think people will think you're a bit of a threat. Probably not, so I did a check. Yeah, maybe just keep it in your bag. Yeah, yeah, keep it in your bag, eh? <laughs> so. Yeah, we did that trip, which I think was good practice, but I think we've been actually practicing our whole lives for this trip, like, you know, 20 years of preparation. We've kind of mapped out two routes. We've been brushing up on our French. Um, we couldn't be any more prepared than we are right now, so I'm just raring to go. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're getting it going, eh? Yeah, we should. George, you're cruising, eh? Yeah, like that coming? Okay, ready. Leaving home, we have two vague routes in our minds. We've decided to head through Botswana and then into Zambia.
From there we'll have a choice to either enter into the south of DRC or push on further north and enter by crossing on the Tanzanian side of Lake Tanganyika or somewhere further up in another neighbouring country. As a start we head to Pretoria to get our visas for the DRC and then race through the rest of South Africa before reaching Botswana which marks our first step into a foreign country. Guys, you really don't feel the cold here? Yeah, it's freezing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems as though we're already a bit of a spectacle, but we're hoping that that works in our favour as we stick our thumbs out and try to catch some trucks north towards our next stop in Botswana, Francistown, and then eventually Zambia. But hitching isn't actually as easy as it looks, and we only travel about 50 kilometres in our first day. If this is a sign of things to come, we're in for a bit of a tough few months. So we're going about 150 kilometers for 80 pull each, which isn't that great. But uh, we've been so short of lifts, we need to just take what we can get now, so. We uh, arrived in Nata, we just um, we didn't want to pay for the camping site so we we're missioning out into the bushes. We've been walking for about half an hour. Rule number three of hitchhiking is if no one saw you go in to the forest, <laughs> then <laughs> technically you shouldn't get robbed. We've only just begun and we're slowly starting to cover some distance. At night we just sleep wherever our lift stops, trying to save as much money for later on in the journey. Bologna and bread. That's the Botswana combo. Because food's too expensive here. Sometimes if we're feeling flush we get some sauce for the bologna. But this is not one of those nights. Okay, so we've had our first casualty of the trip. No, man, there's no time to talk about this. Just <laughs> undo it, bro. Luke's got his, one of his dreams. Uh, yeah. the bro, how much of your hair am I losing if I just rip it? <laughs> you seriously jabbed it, didn't you? Ooh, quite a bit, eh? <laughs> I'll pull it for you. I can get it. I just don't know. Oh, just don't break the zip for me. Ow! Bro, you're, you're literally going to break the zip. When I use your knife, they don't. At this point, our plan hasn't even begun to sink in. We're still too busy enjoying every moment as it comes, just letting the road take us wherever. It's beginning to take shape in a lot of detours and it's turning into quite a meander. But it kind of fits our style. We're not really professionals or ex-army officers or survivalists. Circles, eh? My dentist can be proud. I hope they're watching us. And our film equipment is limited to what we can carry. But the pure stoke is carrying us as we chase this strange childhood dream. Yesterday we had a terrible day hitching, or more like a terrible three days hitching. Uh, we just really, really struggled to get lifts and um, we kind of just decided to hit the road a little bit. We walked a little bit and uh, we got off of the uh, lift in the back of this uh, car. It's not exactly going to our desired destination. Uh, it's going to a place called Mound. Whoa! <laughs> yes, like that was so. Which is a little bit off our natural route. Uh, but uh, Botswana is a little bit like all roads lead to Rome, so we'll eventually get to the right place. It's just a little bit cold because it's still early morning. Other than that, we're having a tour.
with like literally the most crazy time ever. I saw a 30 kilometers an hour sign and me doing about 130, 140. It's been absolute chaos. But needless to say, we've got to our destination super quickly. We don't exactly know where we are other than we're on the road to where we want to go. Um, and um, yeah, we're just in these open backs and there's just this huge vast sky above it. And uh, it's got quite a magical sort of like mystical feel. And uh, you're just so small in comparison to everything. And um, yeah, it's end of week one, and kind of for us, it just symbolized like the pursuit of, um, you know, this kind of magical beast or myth or fiction, or maybe true, depends which side of the fence you sit on. And um, yeah, it's just like sort of a symbol of that adventure that's to come. And this is the first step in that sort of long three month quest. <laughs> Sounds like a truck. Ooh, so it's like we are not desperate. We've got to play the game right. We were walking along the road. We've been walking basically all day. And the road is so empty. <coughs> I haven't had a single lift. Been a few people stopping, but I've been driving past, but no one stopped for us. We found this little owl, it was a giant eagle owl. Something smells like that, so. I don't think it's him. A lot of good meat on it. Oh, bro, this is such good meat. Have you seen this? Pretty fresh, found it the night before. Or it could have been killed the night before from what we assessed. Oh, this is 100%. Nothing wrong with this. And yeah, it's pretty good so far, eh? Look like there's some nice star, eh? I'll meet to win. I'm gonna start an owl farm when I go home. Traveling can be a strange thing. You're just living out your bag, always on the run. 20 kilometers here, 100 kilometers there, not even entirely sure where you're going but it all adds up, and before you know it, you've traveled across an entire country. Botswana has been exactly that. Our lift to Mount has been far from the quickest route possible, but the meander has been beyond beautiful, and we've landed up on the Okavango Delta. Still far off our final destination, but at least that one step closer. We're already nine days in, a little off our original route, but we're two countries down and it feels as though hitching luck has finally turned the corner. It's just like a bit like feathery. Stinky. And we're gonna try this one for free, just to save money, because we had a bit of a dent in the budget. But we're taking it in turns. I'll go one, Luke goes one. And then if Don wants a break from the camera, he can go one. Is this your first time to come in? Yeah, first yeah, time to Namibia. Namibia in 2013 I was in Botswana. Uh, yeah. So it's my second time to Botswana. Um, okay, so we're in the... Um, we just got to Mahambo border. We're just about to cross mm -hmm. into um, Namibia. We got about a 20k trip to our next stop. And then after that we're gonna be missioning right across the Caprivi Strip. So that could be quite interesting, especially if our hitchhiking luck is not on our side. 
Man, this could be slow going, because what if no one's coming yet? <laughs> We've just entered into Namibia. It's a really sick, chilled place. Um, I'm out of breath because Jordan's on an absolute mission. There's a really sick river. Uh, it's called Mavango or something like that. And he's just flipping amped to fish. So he's like sort of 100 meters ahead of us and he's absolutely pacing us. What did he chew, eh? He was just like, he's like down there. So I'm like, oh, it's like, of course you can. It's a free country. I said, is it safe? He's like, it is. He's like, look, I'm not going to promise you nothing's going to happen, but he said it is safe. Okay. <laughs> I think he's afraid of it. I'm not. I need proper scissors, eh? Yeah, it should be strong enough. spot further down actually the rocks are would have been good bro I bet the only thing Jordan's catching down there is mosquitoes yo I just squashed one that's got blood in it so you always charred one of the guys so angry to mash thanks Jordan thanks for mashing you A little bit of a dead patch for trucks. Just kind of walking along this road. Kind of struck a deal with the truck driver. He did take us all the way to the border, but he, um, he didn't really follow through. He was kind of sulking about the price and stuff. So if we pay for this next leg, we're getting ripped off. So kind of semi committing to the walk and ho hoping someone just stops and picks us up. The one, I think it's the one of the Katima. What's the name of it? Katima. Kaminga. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going very far. Probably got a couple of K's in this one. It might take us to where there's some water. So um, I think we're all probably a little bit dehydrated. We ran out of water at lunch. We've just been gone on like the last sort of half a litre. Damn, damn, damn. Thank you. I would have minded just the day at that pool. What are you having for supper? Eh? Nice. Uh, Potatoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, at this stage, you've just been traveling for miles and miles. Um, and the more you see of the terrain, the more you cover, the more beautiful it gets. And the further you go from home, the wilder things get. And the wilder things get, the closer you feel to these sort of what you've heard of the Congo and these stories that you've heard of Mikel and Bembe and sort of despite the, the mammoth distance that's still ahead of you, you kind of get psyched and pumped, uh, you know, that you, you're on the path to get there as much as it's so distant, you're on your way. Super stoked, I don't know, there's something about 
crossing the Zambezi, once you get to the other side, it's just like all the sights change. It's just, you can't really compare it to anything like you've had at home, you know. So, yeah, we're super stoked. Lifting the spirits in the trip, it's a really nice feeling just to be crossing the river, starting Zambia, Congo, and then, yeah, it's a good feeling. Open back, eh? Oh. She just said that she really liked me and that she wanted to get to know me better. Yeah. I've got one one pack of biscuits to keep us alive. So I've just caught Jordan red-handed, being stoked about us three centimeter fish. This ridiculously packed truck has stopped. We're hoping it's gonna give us <laughs> Whoa! So our trip's taken a little bit of a turn for the worst. As long as you're not a part of the rebel groups that are cruising around, then you're fairly safe. Your biggest threat is sort of getting caught in crossfire. So Luke, Luke got arrested today, first arrest of the trip. You can literally see how quiet the streets are behind us. The mutiny has gone to a bit of a next level and they've just started throwing all the beers overboard. I don't know what you're actually paddling into there. Could be a disaster, could be a lot of fun. I have this to my name now, which is like water and toothbrush. I spent the last 10 hours vomiting out of the taxi window. Jordan's really struggling with the heat in the car and I realize he's running a major fever. It's too close, it's not even fun to die. It's terrible. The first time I know we're all thinking about turning around. Have you heard of any dinosaurs in the Congo? In a thick jungle, anything is possible. Quite a sort of airy, surreal feeling to think in a place where Kelly and Bembe possibly just strolled through. Have you seen it? He said something about two young that are still kind of roaming around in this reserve. I mean, if there was a dinosaur living anywhere, this would be it. 